Hey guys, Anime Night here. This is going to be my biggest video I've ever done. It's my history with Crash Bandicoot. Um, I tried recording some of the old gameplay from the classic games, but unfortunately I ran into a lot of problems. So I'm going to be using clips from, uh, from the Insane Trilogy, but I will also make that a segment of its own later on, just to get my point across. Um, hope you all enjoy it. Um, worked really hard on this. Um, I love you all. Enjoy. Hi guys. Let's go back to 1996. You have the PlayStation 1. You pop in a brand new game, September of 96. You get home excited. You pop in the game. And then you go and you hear this sound. That's right, Crash Bandicoot 1, and yes, I am using the Insane Trilogy um, stuff because I couldn't get the other stuff going despite that intro, but after that intro, it just went all to shit. So, uh, story so far in Crash 1, uh, Dr. Neo Cortex and Embryo are doing are trying to get Crash to become Cortex's general over his um, minion army of world domination. However, Embryo doubts the effectiveness of the Cortex Vortex and they have no idea what it could do or will it accept Crash. And we see what happens when the machine uh, rejects him and Cortex, so full of ego and arrogance, doesn't see it until it's far too late as he tries to fix it again. But Crash luckily escapes and goes out the window. Unfortunately for Crash, he forgot his girlfriend Tana, who is still at the Cortex castle as she is now surrounded by the lab assistants. On Insanity Beach, Crash wakes up and... Uh, and then we get into the basic controls of the jump, the spin, of the jumping, and then also the spin. It's simple basic moves. Um, this game was made by Naughty Dog in 1996. It was originally called the Sonic's Ass Game for uh, various reasons. We're also introduced to the invincibility mask of Aku Aku and the also the invincibility power-up which really decimates all the boxes. Um, it's amazing how we go from the beach to the beginning part of the jungle in this vast world, uh, narrow, linear hallway, um, like from the back hand, from the back end camera to a few side scrolling moments, which we'll see later on. There's also gem collecting by breaking all the boxes, as we will see. Which would which does save your progress in the original, but if you didn't have this thing called a memory card, you had to have a long, infuriating password. This is Rolling Stone, which introduces us to the TNT. But if you have the invincibility mask, you have no problem getting through that, and you just blast right on through. This level also introduces us to the bonus stage. There are three types. There's the Tana bonus stage and the uh, embryo uh, stage and also the cortex stage which we'll all see later on each one gets magically harder also that right there is the uh, missing gem platform there are colored gems in all three games that we have to collect throughout the whole sections and open up secret paths and everything and also, you also learn different things. Now, here is the bonus round. This game blew my mind when I first got it on the PlayStation back 
I believe it was either Christmas of 96 or my birthday in 97. It was one of the two. But just seeing it for the first time really blew my mind as a kid. It's amazing what you can do. Also, this is what happens when you miss the boxes. The boxes do land on you, showing you that you did miss these boxes. But that's a okay because it shows you, hey, you missed these three, but you could do better than, than that. Moving on, we also get to we also traverse the entire island and go into different stages from the beach level to a native fortress level, and we climb all the way up on this high wall, bounce on the metal crates, which are the metal bouncing crates. And we are introduced to side-scrolling platforming, like we were with the uh, Tana bonus stage. That continues through here. It's not just uh, restricted to the stage. And we have the bonus life. Next, we're out running the chase stage. This took inspiration from uh, Indiana Jones, the Boulder Dash, and everything. This makes this is a re reoccurring theme in all three games. We also go to an upstream level. Where we traverse upstream trying to get to the end. And this gourd, it, it's so vast and everything well done. Uh, then we fight our first boss, which is Papu Papu. This boss was a joke. I love Papu Papu, but he's so underrated. And for many reasons, because it's just so easy to cheese him in a ridiculous manner. Also, this is the embryo stage that I did mention earlier. This is the part, this is a second part of the bonus stages. It's not just Tawny you have to look out for, because these do count in a, in a sense towards the box completions back then. On top of that, we're introduced to our first vehicle level, which is the Hog. Now, the Hog, it, it, the controls in the original were a little funky, like they were so tight knit and everything. It was like a little hard to maneuver in certain in certain uh, sections of this level, but it was fun nonetheless. Ripper Roo were introduced to another boss by the name of Ripper Roo. He has a pattern. He has a, he has a boss pattern like Papu Papu, but it's more complex as this, as the game progresses and. Seeing Ripper Roo for the first time, his laugh and everything, it was so iconic, I fell in love with it. Now, as you probably have noticed, the levels do get harder. You notice the difficulty increase, the levels get harder. We're at the Lost Ruins to deep, dark temples, and just vast different worlds. It expands and comes to life. We're also taking on the bridge levels which is a bridge suspended in mid-air with weak with weak uh, boards and everything so your timing must be absolute and it's everybody's favorite level <laughs> I joke but anyway also this is a cortex one this one you get the key in this that unlocks further levels which you need to complete also we're introduced to Koala Kong uh, simple back and forth between the between you just talk chalking boulders at you and really simplistic boss fight a lot of fun just watch him go at it and we also get to the industrial part of the island where we're at cortex power and then we get to see also more of like the industrial like the toxic waste the machinery and also like just pipes and everything so we've gone from the beaches and the jungle to native fortresses to the industrial section in one seamless game and it's pretty wild how it transitions from all of that Overall, I love Crash Bandicoot. It's my first introduction to the game. Just seeing all the different branching paths and everything to and from to and from areas where you find secret collectibles. Also, box bridges to where you're jumping on boxes. It's a simplistic concept that was so innovative at the time for for the PlayStation and Naughty Dog really hit a home run with this one as the first game because it was a sleeper success. It gained national uh, acclaim, and we also get to see more of the 
levels where we hop over barrels like in Donkey Kong. This what level was inspired by that. So nice little callbacks to classic games before this. And also we got to meet uh, Pinstripe Potoru. Shout out to my friends who like the character. And also um, Slippery Climb. And then we get further. We're almost to the castle. Then a Lights Out one where it, the gameplay is so vastly different. And then we fight Embryo. And we take him out, no problem. And then the lab, one of the hardest levels out there. It's amazing how we're this close to the end. When you're so focused and you climb up and everything, this level was cut from the game. This is Stormy um, Ascent. Really crazy, really chaotic level. This is the Great Hall. Um, if you collect all the gems, you get a secret bonus ending. But for now, we're just going to show the actual ending, and there we go. And then, we're in 1987. Crash. Bandicoot 2. Cortex strikes back. Press start to begin. That's right, Crash Bandicoot 2 Cortex Strikes Back. We pick up where the first game left off. This was my second game I bought, I got for Christmas of that year. It was a wild year for 97. The Attitude Era was starting, um, the Montreal screw job. But that's topics for another time. This is about Crash. Um, overall, I loved um, Clan Clancy Brown as Cortex. He will forever be my Cortex. I love Lex Lang. No, no diss or anything. But this is our introduction to um, uh, an engine uh, with a rocket in with a rocket in his head. Uh, he. Just don't ask him about it. He rarely talks about it. So in this synopsis, Cortex is pondering on finding an enemy because he has a master crystal. And since they don't have any allies left after Crash literally beat the crap out of all of them, uh, Cortex devises an ultimate scheme in which he knows that he knows what Crash he offers Crash, uh, he gives Crash an offer that he can't refuse. And so we're in, also introduced to Coco um, outside of Tana, because Tana's not in this one. There's a lot of controversy as to why, like rumors, everything. But um, it's it's a lot of fun seeing a different, another female character in this beloved game. And so it, it shows you like the difference. You could do, you could crouch now, you can slide. Um, you can belly flop actually um, new mechanics in the game which makes it better and we also go through so much we go through so many different levels and crash goes gets has to go get the battery for Coco that's what we're that's what the original mission is in this one but unfortunately we get whisked away by Cortex, who demands Crash to gather crystals to, harness, to help harness, to contain the plant's energy and bring peace. But that's a lie, though. We go. So, our first introduction is Turtle Woods. When I saw this song for the first time in Crash 2, it was beautiful. I loved the music. I loved the, the different enemies, like the new ones. Um, the turtles are back, but they're more advanced. Like, they're still there this time. They have spikes on them because they were genetically mutated. Also, we have secret areas now which are more prominent now and more obvious later on. There's like subtle hints like, hey, there's a secret area here. Uh, jump down it. Um, I love the secret area because it, it brings out more and it brings more life to the game. Just gorgeous... Um, just so much you can find, even hidden gems. 
Uh, this is Snow Ghost. Snow Ghost introduces us to the Nitro Crate in which you touch it, you go kablooey. Instead of the TNT where you just jump on it and it blows up. The Nitro Crate is a very dangerous crate in the game. And I, it's a must avoid at all times. But you'll, you can either learn the easy way or the hard way. This one also introduces uh, ice physics, which takes a bit to a uh, time to control. But once you get the hang of it, though, it is so much easier once you get the mastering of it. Uh, in the original, there was a lot of ice physics, and it was like really slippery here and there in certain segments. Uh, there's also more riding levels. This time, we're introduced to a jet board. Um, this was really cool. I originally did have a Crash Bandicoot model back then, which had the jet board and everything with the crystal. It was awesome. I don't know where it is now. Also, the boulder stages are back um, with the boulder, which gradually evolves into a polar bear. Ripper Roo is back. He makes his triumphant return in Crash 2 and wants revenge for the defeat of Crash 1. Like TNT's Nitro, and you just smack him around a little bit. And this one, it's it's a fun little secret. This one, you get extra lives, and it's just so funny how this how this happens. My first initial discovery, I was shocked. Now, secret areas, like I said, they are more prominent and obvious. It leads to warp rooms like this, where you get secret gems. Also, there's bear riding more secret stuff like the green gem in an uh, an eel an eel deal uh, as you'll clearly see in this one very short it's relatively short um just a few hazards here and there slip past that past the barrels um gorgeous levels um the difference from going the forest to being in a sewer i wish we had more sewer levels i wish we had more those were fun at the time just seeing that environment in this game we're also introduced to the komodo brothers komodo mo and komodo joe fun boss fight i don't know why people didn't like this boss fight i never understood it it's just so much fun to watch and everything just once but once you learn the patterns and spin Joe back in the bow It's hilarious ruin nation is probably one of my favorite levels in crash 2 because you see the remains of cortex castle in the background and Also the polar bear is back and you got slide enemies too where you have to slide into them Tiny tiger makes his debut tiny tiger scared me as a kid like the roar, everything beating down the door, and then jumping back and forth. But with precision jumping and everything, he is easy to deal with. We now are in different areas. Like, we have snow and everything. Just very cool levels. Uh, Cold Heart Crash, this level. F fuck this level. And also, there's a funny little Easter egg. Um, this is a middle finger. The devs do how big of a pain in the ass this level is, especially the death route. Believe me, uh, just just the hell with this level. We're also introduced to Engine the boss fight for the first time, but he's short work once you know what to do. And there's the slide enemies. We're in just like futuristic space and everything. Um, from my understanding, we're in a space station, which is pretty cool. Um, you get jumping enemies, and then we're introduced to the jetpack too as part of the vehicle level. This one takes a bit, it takes a bit to get used to. And then finally, we come to Mr. Cortex himself, and that's the end of it. Sony Computer Entertainment America presents a Universal Interactive Studios production. Okay, created and developed. Bye, Naughty Dog! That's right, Crash Bandicoot th Warped. Um, one of my favorite games from the trilogy. This one really took everything that made two great and upgrade and really revved up like the vehicles and everything. The power ups were introduced to Uka Uka. Um, we just saw a piece of the Cortex Vortex spaceship crash, and then here we are with Aku Aku, Coco, and Crash Bandicoot and Polar. 
and then they hear the evil laugh and pull up poor, poor poor polar he's so scared and uh, aku aku knows something's wrong and they go and they go back inside and ponder what has happened um Uka Uka is introduced where he has been working for court. He has where Cortex has been working for him. And look at Uka Uka bitching like a little princess. Blah blah blah. So Aku Aku tells Crash and Coco the history between him and Uka Uka and how dangerous he really is and he must be stopped. And so Aku Aku takes Coco and Crash to the Time Twister machine where we get to explore the different time periods. We're also introduced to um, banter by the villains. I love this because it's like a breaking the fourth wall type of thing where they talk to us, the player. We got Cor Cortex and Uka Uka and then we got our introduction to Toad Village which is gorgeous. Um, when I first, the medieval levels are my favorite. We're also introduced to the underwater level, which in the scuba outfit, with, which Crash is wearing. I will forever defend these levels because these were fun, innovative, and it really adds more to it. Like we, it makes the world more expanded. We're also on the Great Wall of China with Coco, first playable char female character in the Crash franchise from. Uh, tiger riding to jet skiing. My honest opinion, you know, I feel like the controls in the original were a lot better. Um, the controls felt a little slippery in the in the insane. And then we fight Tiny Tiger, and then we get power ups, which is the super body slam. And then we also travel to Arabia in the Egyptian levels, and then we're hot riding on a motorcycle, racing uh, hot rods with police cars who are stationed there for whatever reason. Then we get to meet Dingo Dio. Good day, mate. Dingo Dial's the name. And then we get to meet Pompous and Troopy. Yes, the clown himself. We also get um, to use the combat of powers, and also we get to fly a plane uh, Engine scared me as a kid with his voice, but his boss fight was pretty cool. I enjoyed it. That's It's a two-stage one, so this was the first stage, and then we get to meet the second stage, and then we make short work of him, and we're introduced to the Fruit Bazooka, which is a fun power-up to use in certain situations like you'll see right here. Overall, Crash Warped is a lot of fun. Also, we're introduced to the Speed Shoes. Um, this is to help with the time trials, as you'll see, like the relics and everything, which also unlock the secret area that you see before you. The more relics you collect, the more levels you open. And this is the ending of Crash Bandicoot Warped, um, with the defeat of Cortex and Uka Uka. Um, the world is saved once and for all. A lot of fun. Um... Our next game takes place in 1999. Crash Team Racing was my was a nice introduction to the kart racing genre for the Bandicoot. It featured a lot of casts and everything from the original trilogies, and it featured a new character, Nitrous Oxide, who's unplayable unfortunately, but you need a cheating device in order to work. So Oxide comes to the planet and he demands to challenge the fastest racer. On that planet and Crash and everybody gear up and race to become the fastest racer to challenge Oxide for the fated planet. Unfortunately for Oxide he loses and he can't turn the planet into a miserable uh, lockup and like a concrete parking lot and then make everybody his minions. As for Crash Bash, it's a party game. Um, I have very fond memories of it, just playing and just mindlessly throwing TNTs at everybody. Fun game overall, but repetitive later on. A lot to say, but it was very underdeveloped, and there was a lot of stages that did too much stuff. I love the bowl rolling stages, I love the mask. Fun game overall. Uh, Mind Over Mutant, same story. I have very little memories of And here we are, 2017 credit. Massive credit to my sister for taking a photo of me at GameStop, getting my pre-order of the Insane Trilogy. Um, a lot of fun. I was so stoked to get home and play this. Activision presents... 
A smashing blast from the past. Vicarious visions. It's Crash Bandicoot. Oh dear. But yeah, Crash, Crash and Saint Trilogy, it took everything from the classic three games and gave it a massive overhaul with secret levels and everything. Um, a load of fun. Crash, nice for feel. Well, watch the intro. Fasten your seatbelts for a Beanox recreation. It's a really awesome game for it for the time. A lot of fun with the customizations of different characters spanning across all eras with the multiple um, customizations, all the characters, all the levels, including Nitro Kart, which I haven't had the chance to play, unfortunately. But man, it was it was wild. Cause this right here is the definitive way to play the um, CTR game now. Unlike the original, which you can still play the original for that classic era, but if you want a more modern and more fast paced, wacky race, Nitro Fueled is the place to be. Um, loads of fun. Uh, the courses look gorgeous. Crash Bandicoot 4, it's about time. This game was a load of fun. Um, it really took everything that was supposed to be Wrath of Cortex and made it better. The story is, it takes place right after Warped, and Cortex is vowing revenge against Crash for sending him back into the prison that they're in, and he beats up the doll and everything. That's actually hilarious. Entropy and Uka Uka have been trying for 20 plus years to figure out a way to get out of there, and Cortex has criticized both of them, and Entropy doesn't take take much from Cortex and he tells him to bug off and but they're both interrupted by Uka Uka who finally gets the rift open and we much to the dismay of Uka Uka he drained all his energy and is out cold and Entropy sees the opportunity he says come Cortex we shot we have a world to take over and that's the start of Crash Bandicoot 4 um, the levels are amazing. I love how everything looks. Crash looks so cartoony. We also introduce um, the the linear gameplay, um, and then the rail sliding, which is awesome. I love the expansion of gameplay. It really adds more to it while still staying true to Crash's gameplay. And then we're also uh, introduced to Lanny Lully, one of the four quantum masks that Crash and Coco must seek out and find to restore the quantum wrists and close everything, uh, restoring stability in their world. But I, I love how this looks. So cartoony, like I said. Uh, Lanny Lully looks awesome. And then there's the chase scene. And then the Crash's face. I love it. I love the designs. Toys for Bob did a great job. Um, a load of fun and there's the chase scene which is a callback to uh to all three games we also get um a hidden gem and then we have the uh the crash one uh formula of traversing the different levels and everything really cool also Lane lowly he phases objects in and out um, in the background and foreground at a touch of a button. Now, instead of crystals, we are introduced to flashback tapes, which are hidden throughout the level, which are collected without dying, and you're rewarded with it, and you go back in time to 96 when Crash and Coco were subject to, um, trials by Cortex to become world, their, their generals and everything like that. Um, it's... A lot of lore, lots of fun. It has the original Crash Bandicoot music from all three games. Not the uh, remat, not the uh, Insane Trilogy, but the classic ones. Here we have um, Akano, and then 
uh, Tana as a game as a playable character next to Dingle Dial and Cortex. There's Caputo Wall who slows down time. Uh, really a cool ability and a cool power mask. Oh, you're gonna love this. See, watch this. Bing. Take that sneak shoes from Wrath of Cortex. Also, this Ika Ika, the gravity defying mask. A lot of fun with that one. And then there's Cortex. Uh, Crash on the Run. Um, I didn't have much time to fully play it. As for Crash Team Rumble, this game was a lot of fun. I had a great time playing this game. I'm glad and it's still going strong despite what's been happening lately. But um, I enjoy what it is. It's actually a nice um, PvP multiplayer battle. Um, loads of customization. You get you get to play as a selected group of characters with more coming along the way from Ripper Roo to Alora, the Tana, Crash, Coco, Entropy, Female Entropy, uh, Brio, Engine, Ripto, Alora, Spyro made its debut in Season 3. Um, all in all, so much fun. Uh, I love this game. I play it every now and then. You'll, you, you'll, you should, you'll see me from time to time. Um, but like I said though, and like I said, Ripper Roo is here and many others with the customization. The battles are a lot of fun. Um, and then there's female entropy. Well guys, um, overall Crash Bash is here to stay. I can't wait to see what the future brings for the Crash and Spiral universes. I'll do Spiral. If you guys want me to do Spiral, just let me know. Just let me know when you want me to do it, and I'll happily do the video. In closing, I really hope you all enjoyed um, my adventure on Cra of Crash. Um, my history with it, lots of memories growing up and everything. Um, leave a comment, subscribe, let me know your history with Crash Bandicoot. Bye guys.